Do you ever find yourself with a mountain of tasks to do and no matter how many hours you spend on it, it never gets done? If you have, this video is for you. Now, primarily, this is a property investment channel, but this really relates to any activity that you're trying to advance. And I see this more and more and more and more. People just doing ridiculous amounts of hard work and never ending task lists. And even worse, not actually getting the outcomes that they're looking to achieve. So if you're in property, maybe you're thinking, I need to raise money and need to get deals. And then for months, people will work really hard and not have any money or deals. And it's kind of like, well, how does that happen? So maybe this relates to if you're looking to learn a language, build a business, be better at your job or anything else. So how do you approach it? So the first thing I like to look at is your structure. And what I mean with this is organization. Now, this is kind of pot calling the kettle black situation mm -hmm. because I am not the most organized individual in the world. However, because of that, I've really had to work on it as I've built a business because I have to seem to do 10 people's jobs in a single day. And that can be really difficult. You need to start your day off. It's very short, not one of these morning routines. It's 11 a.m. before you finished it. You need to lay out the day. What hours have I got available and what are the key outcomes that I'm looking to get from the day. Once you then go through that structure and you need to optimize for success, which I'll talk through in point two, you're then doing an end of day debrief at the end. So an end of day debrief is really reflection. And then on this reflection, you write down five positive things that happened. It's really hard doing this, by the way. Five positive things that happened and one thing that didn't go to plan that you can improve on and take into the next day. Day structure allows for an outcome. And honestly, you can show me the calendar of somebody that says they're really trying. And I can tell within 30 seconds of looking at that calendar if they're going to be successful or not in a lot of cases. So make sure you've got a structure that is set for success. Number two brings me on to optimization. So I mentioned optimize for success. Now, this actually requires quite a lot of focus and intelligent thinking. A lot of people, let's say in property, go, I've got to get my website done, I've got to get my nurture sequence done, I've got to get my CRM, my alternation sequence. I've got to think about uh, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, TikToks, YouTube, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, admin, finance everything else in between. And actually, that's not optimizing for success. That's optimizing for being bloody busy or also known as a busy fool. So what does optimizing for success looks like? Well, what it is, is about isolating to the one thing. Great book, by the way, if you haven't, this is what it looks like. I'll put a link in the description. So it's a great book, and I'll save you some time if you don't want to read it. Focus on one thing at a time. If you can visualize this, imagine you've got 10 units. One unit representing 10% of your focus, energy, outcome, outputs for the day. You've got a circle, and this is your total focus, and you focus on one thing, you grow by 10 units. Whereas if you imagine the circle next to it and this is your focus and you focus on 10 things and you allow one unit per focus, you're only growing in those areas. And I've had this chat with my business partner over the years where we've both worked ridiculously hard on a lot of things over here and actually done fairly poorly in all of them. And so I'm much better isolating one thing, being rubbish at the nine things or doing nothing towards them, communicating with the people that I'm doing nothing towards them and focus on that one thing until successful. Many people actually say the word focus is follow one course until successful. Follow on the course, be a success. So then it's about optimizing for the one thing you're looking for. For example, in property, if I am optimizing for investor leads, everything I do within the time constraints that I've got will be to attract new leads, i.e. I'll do YouTube videos, I'll do YouTube ads, Facebook ads, Facebook posts, and everything will have a hook and a call to action. For example, and this is a real one if you're interested, hey, if you've got 50 to 100,000 or more that you want to invest in property to build your portfolio, but you don't have the time, then that's where we come in at Aspire Property Group. We'll help you build your portfolio so that you can focus on working hard for your money and I'll focus on getting your money working hard for you. Put APG in the comments 
or I'll put in the link in the description. You can have a free strategy session with the team to find out how you can achieve your results. So everything I should be doing if I'm optimizing for leads will be doing that. If then I'm optimizing for quality, let's say I get loads of leads, loads of you do APG. Let's say I need to optimize for quality of leads because I'm getting too many. Then I might say, hey, we only take on investors with 250,000 or more now. And you get my point. And then you optimize for number of phone calls and then you optimize for closing investors. The point is most people in investments, they're so vague. They go, I need to get investors. I need to optimize for making money. It's like, no, you don't. You need to optimize for getting leads. Then when you're really good at that, you need to optimize for the quality of leads. And then you need to optimize for the conversations and understand how to get people on the phone to you, what's gonna get them excited. And then you optimize for closing. If you can isolate and optimize, then you will get the result and then you move on to the next stage. And by the way, if you're wondering how you can do this in your situation, whether that's in property or anything else, let me know in the comments below and I will respond to as many as possible with an example of the optimization process for you. Number three, if you're trying to optimize, you have to remove the noise. There's so much distraction. What's the first thing that you do when you get out of bed in the morning? When you wake up, what's the first thing that you do? Be good, don't be naughty. Most of us, the first thing we do is grab our phones, right? We grab our phones, we go, oh, yeah, let's see, maybe I'll go on emails, maybe I'll go on Instagram, then I'll see some stories, maybe I'll go on my YouTube stats, see how many subscribers I've got, and I can see you still haven't subscribed, and I'll do everything else that gets in the way. I'm then distracted, I come to work, I need to focus. Jamie, can I have a quick question? Can I grab you for five minutes? Jamie this, Jamie that, ja If you work for me, I'm really sorry, I'm not slagging you off, I promise. But suddenly, hours of your time are taken up by other people's interruptions. And what you need to realize is that actually, just because something is urgent to another individual doesn't make it urgent to you. And I'm not saying all of these other stuff. So the example in property investment, a website, you know, a website, Jamie York website, which is now live if you type in jamieyork.com or .co.uk. But I bought that domain about four years ago and it's been under construction for about three and a half years. In fact, if you went on the About Me page, it was a young blonde woman that came up as the image. No, I didn't do that, by the way. No idea why. So it's only recently. So did I need the website? No. You guys have got to know me without a bloody website over the last few years, right? So then it's about focusing, removing that noise and optimizing in line with that. A great tip with this, by the way, is to follow the four D's method. So four D's, delete, delegate, delay, do. So the way that I do that is you can look at something called the Eisenhower's matrix. If you look at the image here, it sort of breaks down urgent and important, urgent and not important, not urgent, but important, not urgent, not important. And the four Ds come into this. If you look at it, you have to ask yourself, is this in line with what I'm trying to focus on right now? If not, delete. And I don't just mean if it's an email from somebody, delete it. Reply to them, say, really sorry, really busy on this. Maybe you could touch base in a couple of months. I'll see if I've got the capacity to take it on. Delete it. Next is delegate it. Is this something that I think is decent to do, but it's not high value enough for me? Can I outsource it? And by the way, you don't need to be rich to do this. You can get a virtual assistant in a, another country, for example. We've got... um. What have we got? We've got virtual assistants in the Philippines where a month's salary is about 500 pounds. Now that might sound crazy over here, but that's a really good salary there. So you're able to pay people above the average wage. They're massively hardworking, brilliant results from them. And it's costing you something like $3 an hour. So delegate out, outsource everything that you can possibly do. And by the way, this isn't just in business. At home, what can you outsource? And people think like, oh no, that's really snooty. No, it's not. I love cooking. I absolutely love cooking. However, I love ordering fresh ingredients, learning a new cuisine, spending the whole day doing like a three course meal. That's really hard to do when you're busy all the time. What I do not like is cooking for two hours a day just to fuel my body. So I delegate cooking. I delegate cleaning. I delegate um, 
out uh, gardening. Now I've got a driver to outsource longer, longer journeys to visit my developments and things. Now this is going to be at different levels, but you need to delegate out. So delete, delegate. Next is delay. If you're looking at something, you're going, that is really important. That is really high value, but that is not my most urgent. That is not what I'm optimizing for right now. Then it's great just to email the person back, say, hey, I think this is going to take me about five hours to do. Really sorry, I'm not going to be able to get around to that for three weeks, just so you know I've got it in my diary for this day. So you communicate and you move on, get your mind space back to what it is. And then finally, is it urgent and important? So for example, I'm filming this video for you right now. If there were a fire that has started in the corner, I'm not going to be going, yep, yeah, um, you need to be delaying what you're doing and de delete out everything. you because obviously I'm going to stop the video, sorry, and focus on putting out the fucking fire, right? So delete, <laughs> delegate, delay, and do as the last resort. The final tip I want to give you before wrapping up is automation. Automation is insane right now. Where can you use software? For example, artificial intelligence is k ray Zay at the moment. You can use something like ChatGBT, or you can write blogs, for example, using copy.ai. It's phenomenal. You can give it the keywords, the outcomes. Obviously, read it over your foot, uh, before you send it out, but it's a really great way. You can produce about 10 blogs in about 10 minutes. You can write an entire website in about five minutes flat. It's, it's insane. You really do need to check it out. But there's so much software out there right now that it's ignorant to not be utilizing it. I know this might be bad, but as a business owner's point of view, there's a lot of downsides to having employees. I'm sorry, Amy. But a computer doesn't get sick. A computer doesn't need holiday pay. A computer isn't costing me 25 grand a year. A computer doesn't sulk. A computer doesn't sleep with other computers and so much more. So it's different as a business owner, but for you, you need to isolate what you're great at right now and use software. For example, today's video sponsor is Lendlord. And in the property world, everyone that I know that's really building a portfolio uses Lendlord. If you're not into property, it might not not relate to you, but if you're looking to get into property, definitely check it out. There's a link in the description. It's completely free. But with Lendlord, as an example, you can analyze and assess properties on their investment potential short term and long term. You can link it to your bank so you can see all in one place if rents have been there and then set up automations for alerts. You can get access to the best finance and all in one location. Software is an amazing thing. And again, they are today's video sponsor. I want to say a massive thank you to Landlord. They are an incredible company. I use them personally, by the way. You get access. It's completely free. Never any charge for using the platform unless you get access to the finance. If you want, click the link, use it. Let me know what you think of Lendlord in the comments, by the way. Avi, who owns it, is an incredible guy and really wants feedback to constantly improve. If you're out of property, you need to be thinking, you know, sending emails, for example. Do you really need to send an email individually or can you use MailChimp that is free for like 10,000 emails to send it to your whole audience? Can you set up text automations using click send instead of manually writing text? Can you use Podio as a CRM? a customer relationship manager instead of your brain to remember things. There's so much software that you need to utilize. So I'll leave it there for now, guys, because there's a lot of tips in there. Let me know your number one productivity hack in the comments. I tried to reply to as many as possible. As I said, check out Lendlord if you're in property or thinking of getting into property. I hope you subscribe if you are new to the channel and got value from this video. And if you did, it really helps the channel grow by showing others the value that I'm giving. If you just lightly tap the like button. It really does take you two seconds and helps me out massively. I'll see you in the next video.